And do you feel like you've been fucked? <laughs> oh yeah, multiple times. Multiple times. Is how it- how does it feel to get fucked multiple times by a company? Hello everybody. Welcome to the Geekverse. My name is Tyler. My name is Zach. And my name is Phil. And we're your three actual hosts, all in one room, finally together. All in one. The trifecta. The trifecta. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and it's it's exciting because we haven't been able to do a three person one yet, and hopefully going forward, we will be able to do a three person one. So <coughs> I'm hoping for good things. Me too, me too. Uh but, it's all good but things. Tyler's gonna take it off this week. Uh Tyler, what are we talking about this week? We got a lot to talk about. A little bit, a little bit. We're definitely gonna be talking about Star Wars. You guys got what was the game? Star Wars Outlaws. Yeah, Star right. Wars. So we've gotten to play it. We're gonna give our review so far because it is a long fucking game and we have not yeah. beaten it yet. But the next podcast we're going to do a spoiler review on the game. There's certain things in there that I want to talk about that are spoilers, but it'll be exciting to talk about. I have, I was telling Phil yesterday because I didn't play all of Thursday and then Friday, I think I put, I think I put 14 hours in. That's crazy. I played dude. 14 that's hours. Still that's wild, almost man. straight, almost straight. Yeah. So that's literally, insane. yeah. Wh- he was ahead of me. It, yeah. I was ahead of him for like the first two days because we got to like what? Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday. I couldn't Tuesday. play Tuesday. Wednesday I played a lot of Thursday I didn't play anything. Yeah, by Friday I had like twelve or thirteen hours and then he just completely out shoves me. And one day I'm <laughs> We're like, not gonna right. say how I played that many hours, but I played that much. Had a pee ball next to you. Um I'm very, very, very tired from that. But uh it's been fun. Uh, excited to talk about that. As well as I mean more Star Wars video games, like just in general, the eco space of it. Yep. Which will be cool. That's our main topic today, but we also have a lot more to talk about. Well, and also in that realm, too, if we have time, we'll, we'll probably touch upon Destiny. Oh, no, we're talking about that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's in the template. So, uh, But first off, like every podcast, we like rambling on about how we're doing and also recommending things in Arizona if possible. Phil got to go to a PC place. You said there was a restaurant that you wanted to talk about. I don't know which one of you yeah, guys want to start sushi. first. Yeah, d- you which go ahead and start. There you go. Uh, so there's a place that is over by Santan Mall. I can't properly pronounce. I'm going to try to off the top of my okay. head. Shimugamu. Okay. It is the best sushi I've ever had. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, three times I've been, and all three times, anytime I'm there, I'm sitting up at the sushi bar. Uh, there's usually like a family or a couple like next to me because I'll just kind of go by myself and just get mm-hmm. sushi. And every time that couple or family will be their first time and they've always said, I will not get sushi anywhere, anywhere else. else. Oh, I love that. It's so good. They also What's your walk-in. go-to? What's your go-to there? So I actually got a recommendation the f- second time I was there, um, Ocean Trout. That doesn't sound anywhere appealing to me. It but... is phenomenal. <laughs> it's like... Would you try this, Phil? I don't like sushi. Oh, you don't, you don't like, like sushi. It. Oh, okay. It's. I thought you would like. What well, like kind of liked it or no? No, I tried like uh, what is it, California roll? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing sushi. But I <laughs> that it's fake. I'm it like, is okay. not real. Yeah. It is. It's sushi, but it's the most basics of sushi. So it's it's okay. It's, but they do have wagyu there. Yeah. They got, they got steak. Yeah, I'm sure. They for, got beef for a good price. I'm sure, right? <laughs> it's it's definitely pre- pricey, so how do you find out how do you find this place um actually my parents recommended it. Oh, okay they were the way they found it out like they were trying to find some place to go eat they saw like good reviews and like let's check it out and rest is history cool i love to hear that well everybody go check it out you said it's by santan it's in santan mall or no it's by santan mall it's over if people know like you're listening they know the area it's over by where living spaces is oh Oh, perfect yeah sweet there you go go check it out guys uh phil talk about meta pcs because so yeah no i I, oh my goodness sorry um I absolutely love this store. It's right on Elliott and Bell Vista. This is their new location. Yes, this is the new location. Their first one is actually in somewhere in Phoenix. Um, We went there, I think, what was it, like a week ago with Mm -hmm. my brother. Uh, We wanted to just check out some PCs. And there was a really wonderful guy. His name was, I think it was Kyle. And he kind of walked through with my brother, like all the PCs on the showcase. And my brother, like... 
he's pretty uh he doesn't mind asking like a lot of the intrusive questions yeah so he like price compared went to all these different websites and they were super patient they answered all of his questions like really tough questions and pretty were, quickly too yeah they were super chill about it like they That's pulled good. it up and they were like oh this is where they're probably cutting costs here and this and that mm -hmm. and they explained it to him and gave him like all the reasoning and everything about why they price theirs differently or whatever it might be. And he was so happy about it that he walked out with a PC that day. <laughs> so it wasn't like you're dealing with like customer service. Like, Oh, we just kind of like work here. Have a little, no, bit no, it's like very knowledgeable. People yeah. And we're able to explain to you. Yeah, no, this guy was like super chill. I don't think if this guy was like any other way, my brother would have walked out with a PC that day. He was That's super customer cool. service for you. I know. No, he, well, like, he, awesome. he sent me a picture of his P brother's PC the price was the reason I didn't go get a fucking PC that same day. But <laughs> but well, he tells me about this, and I'm like, if I do get a PC, I'll probably end up going from there. Oh, dang. Show it to the camera. It, it's a beautiful... I think so it's beautiful. It's probably hard to yeah. see, but... Here, let me see. It was beautiful. Um, oh, oh damn see. it, Phil. I know. I, I can't Shake my myself. ass. Shake there my go. head. There you go, guys. They I called think. it the Black Mamba. It was uh, $5,000. He dropped five G's that day. Five G's, and but you know what? Though? Not including the monitor. Yeah, not including the and monitor. The we literally, itself. yeah, we went to Best Buy right after, and we got all the parts. Like I said, the guys there were super nice. They were awesome. knowledgeable too. Yeah, they were, which is a big thing. Like I feel like if I'm buying a PC from you, I want, I want my answers. Yeah, I want my answers to everything. And if you can't give me those answers, then why am I? buying a PC from you. Well, not yeah. only that, and but also spending that kind of cash. Yeah. You want to make sure, like, <laughs> the customer service and knowledge, the knowledgeable person you're dealing with. Like, yeah. if I'm spending yeah. this much money, I want to be able to make sure I'm spending exactly. money. They well. were super cool, too, because they sat them down and they pulled them up to the website. Yeah. Had them build out exactly what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And they, like, compared the price points because it was, like, 400 bucks cheaper. He's like, all you got to do is just be – you could either walk out with one or you could be a little bit patient and wait a week. We don't mind either way. And he's just like, I just want it now. now. So Dang. Hell yeah. Yeah. Went right for it. Well, I love to hear that. I'm happy that he got a PC. We support Meta PCs, apparently. Arizona yes. company. Yeah, uh, if it's local, we're definitely will you, So let it. me ask you this. If you get a PC next – Will you go there? It's going to be from out of PCs. Look at that. Would you no. get, if you're going to get a it, PC, if I go did, there? Uh, probably because they're Arizona local. Um, yeah, I'd probably just do it. They it's, also too like every purchase comes with like warranties and stuff like that. See, and that that is the good thing. And also too, I feel like it's nice to have a place that you could physically go to to and take your computer. Yeah. Do they do if, fixes and repairs? Yeah. Too? Oh, so so you take it physically over there. They'll fix it, and it's like dropping your car off at the shop, you know. And so. it's yeah. probably so much better than trying to like do your own research, try to piece everything yeah. together. Yeah, like imagine go like one place because like if don't. my computer busts down, I would have to ship off my computer at a post office, wait oh, maybe God. two weeks or more. Let's yeah, see. remember the days when you're. I don't know if you get this ever happened to you guys on the Xbox 360, but do you guys remember when the <laughs> Xbox 360, uh, like when everything would break? Yeah, like the three and rings death. Death. yeah, and then you'd have to ship it out, and what you get it maybe a month later, if or, that, or sometimes mm -hmm. it'd just be SOL. Mm -hmm. Well, so it's funny because when mine broke, I went, they just shipped me back a fucking brand new one, yeah, like they the brand did the new same slim, thing yeah, it like wasn't even worth fixing on their behalf. Which is funny because I went and bought a new one at Sam's Club, and I was just gonna be an asshole and just fucking swap them when I come back, like take the hard drive out and swap them, nah. I just fucking returned the Sam's Club one and kept that one because it was the brand new, like, slick. Yeah, it even came with the Connect. I didn't even have a fucking Connect. That's crazy. Yeah, they literally just shipped a box back, and then, like, they said that they had already moved everything over. So I didn't even have to worry about, like, mem memories or anything like that. Speaking so, of which, just a little off topic, isn't Xbox coming out with a new console? Aren't they all coming out with the a new series console? S or whatever? Or like XS, I think I saw. Like uh, you can pre -order nothing, or something like that. Not, well, so it's like a, a higher gigabyted version of the new gotcha, versions, but gotcha. it, there's not like a pro version yet. It's rumored that they have a pro version. Same with PlayStation. I think I feel like they're waiting to see what PlayStation's gonna say. Yeah. Like once PlayStation launches there, and they're like, "This is our price. That's what they're just gonna price it at." Um, plus they don't really need to launch one because no one's buying their fucking console right now. Yeah. Um, but I was telling Tyler this, there's a rumor going around Phil and this, 
I actually think is the way Microsoft and Xbox should go. They can have exclusives, but I, I was telling him there's a rumor going around that they're basically just going to open it up. Steam, Epic, all that can go on there. You can plug in your keyboard, and it's basically just a, a, <coughs> a go and play uh, PC. Okay. I think that's the smartest thing they should do. Yeah. To save this console. Well, I think that's a smart move from just Xbox's perspective. Like, definitely PlayStation should still have their exclusives and have anything. Oh, I don't think PlayStation should do that. Well, I think it's smart for them to do that. But still, like how God of War is eventually ported over to PC, still have their exclusives in that realm. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Xbox will now have the ability to play Steam, Epic Games, and anything else that's released from a PC port. Yeah. Because not every game that PlayStation releases oh yeah no be a which is totally port. fine with me and that's where it's like that's probably the perfect thing xbox could do instead of saying you know what we're just going to release everything and have like i heard of rumor yeah. it's like halo is going to go on to playstation which i, I still think, think it's smart. happening i still th- i think the multiplayer of halo will come to the playstation mm. because I, it's free to play when i first built my like gaming computer and everything i made the realization that like a lot of like Xbox's things, all Xbox really is, it's just a simplified version of like a computer. Exactly. Absolutely. And so it's like, obviously you got this console that's from this company that makes computers that does with computer software. And it's like, I always figured that would be the next step is to just cut the restrictions and just let them be a part of the entire like PC community in a way. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you saw on the Game Pass, actually, I think later this year, WoW, the new expansion, it's coming to Game Pass. Oh, so it is. But it's It's, not on Xbox still. It's only on PC, right? I have no clue. Uh, Either way, that's still huge because that means if you have a Game Pass, you can play. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure if you have a Game Pass Ultimate, it will come with like a WoW subscription. Like, I'd be shocked if it did. That sells me to keep my Game Pass. That right there sells me to keep my I game pass because I used to love World of Warcraft, but I, you know, I'm not going to pay for all these fucking memberships. So, yeah. like that, but that's the whole bundling era. Everything's bundled now. Like uh, right now, I have a um, Disney Plus, Hulu, and HBO Max have a bundle, thirty dollars ad free. Hulu alone with no ads is twenty dollars. I was going to say, I'm already, and then HBO Max <coughs> is twenty five. So right there, I'm getting Disney Plus for free. Mm-hmm. Like it's, and itself. then if you do no, or if you do ads, which honestly the ads are not that bad, it's sixteen dollars for all three. Well, Hulu ads are pretty terrible. Hulu ads are, but at least they give you the little <laughs> timer in the corner that's like, hey, this is how much time you have left. Yeah. You know, so I don't know, man. Like these bundlings, I, I know they'll go up in price, or the bundle will eventually go away. And but the reason that they're doing so many bundles is because of what people are doing, and it's smart. They'll cancel their subscription. They'll renew when they need to. Oh, okay. Stranger Things is coming out. I'll renew my Netflix. Yeah. Oh, um, fucking Mandalorian Season 4 is coming out. I'll renew my subscription. Okay, it's done. I'll cancel it now. I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to watch anything. And that's what people are doing. But Speaking uh, of Mandalorian. Yeah. Mandalorian? Yeah. How's uh, Outlaws been? Well, we're not going to talk about that yet. You don't want to talk about no, that No, we got to wait. Oh, we got to okay. wait. Yeah, oh. we, we got to go through the template. Okay. We gotta, I, I did, that was a good segue, though. I will, I will shout you <laughs> out for that. He I had a segue, segue too, and you stole mine. All right, well, you go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, well, speaking about the Mandalorian, uh, <laughs> I bought a, I buy Hot Toys, and there is a local shop near downtown Chandler by uh, Chandler Flowers called Martini's Miscellanea. He has a ton of toys, a ton of toys, mostly Hot Toys, and for a good price. This is where I buy mine from. And what I love about this guy is, first off, I'm going to have him on the podcast. Uh, Because he has a lot of strict feelings about certain things. And I just want to talk to him about that and get his thoughts on the internet. Two, I want to shout out his place. Because when you go and buy hot toys from anywhere else in Arizona, first off, most of them are in like fucking Glendale. (laughs) No one wants to drive to Glendale from this area. And second, they're expensive as shit. Like one hot toy from them is like $500. Like it could be the exact same one. I go to him, $300. Like, if you are a collector, you should be going here. It's funny. I was talking to um, Curtis's brother-in-law and mm-hmm. uh, his dad, and his dad's, like, showing me his room that he has. He has this fucking... He took over Curtis's room, and it's, like, his, his collector's room. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you... And so I showed him mine. He goes, where do you get those from? And I told him, he goes, fuck you. He literally told me, fuck you. You've been holding out on us. <laughs> so uh, JD already went there and bought stuff. 
already already bought stuff so go to martini's miscellanea awesome guy tell him zach pope and the into the geek first crew sent you and yeah guys let's get into the new segment though there's a lot and there's a lot of, to review um to kind of just round out we're going to talk about the hunt showdown a little bit it got a reboot yeah. did you ever play the hunt showdown no okay it's like an extraction shooter but with like monsters yeah, really so cool. I mean, I've, I've been seeing things about it. Yeah, yeah. And then we're gonna talk about Destiny Two and Bungie's troubles uh, because Tyler is our resident Destiny player. And do you feel like you've been fucked? Oh yeah, multiple times. Multiple times. Is how it, how does it feel to get fucked multiple times by a company? I'm retired. <laughs> That's the best way I could put it. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I uh, Destiny had a ten year run. Yeah, which is. Ten years insane. overall, right from the first game, or just the second one? I'm trying to remember. I, I honestly could not remember off the top. Of I'll my look head. it up. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. But it's been a ten year run, and there's been ups and downs. I mean, it's just really impressive that ten year run since the first one. Since the first one, yeah. Jeez. First one That's came out. That game's first one out. came out September 9, twenty fourteen, and then let me look up the second. That's one. so crazy to think about. Second one was twenty seventeen. Um, had its ups and downs since I would say since yeah. the start of the second one had. Good points and then bad points. Good points and bad points. Sunsetting, which is essentially, oh, you bought something and now you no longer are able to play it, which you just basically wasted money. Yeah. And oh. that's what Phil says yeah, every yeah. time we talk about Destiny, even on or off air. He says Destiny players get the most fucked. Oh, yeah. And it's it's crazy because there is something like a charm to it is that people, even though recognize that, have still stuck around for like even you. past that. Oh, yeah, me and plenty of other yeah. people, right? Yeah. And it's a big after, game still. Mm, well, it's I mean, it's big, but it's definitely going slowly down the toilet. Yeah, so, um, from someone that has which is crazy to think get about. Get your like rant out. You thousands go, girl. of 1000 hours, 1000 hours plus. And there's some people that have 3000 plus hours and have spent hundreds of dollars. I mean, you've spent hundreds of dollars on just the on DLC, the DLC, just yeah. on the DLC. Yeah, that's just DLC because that's just what it is. You yeah. pay for the expansion. Other people have paid that plus all the in-game all currencies. All the in-game currency. Ugh. That's what I'm talking. And like now, it's like so okay. gross. It's so gross. And then they do the layoffs. That was the first. Thing, yeah, which and was well, like then it came out seventy. <laughs> yeah, like and employees. then what it came out like the CEO was buying like all these luxury cars. Well, that yeah. so yeah. there was two rounds of layoffs. Yeah, there was the first round of layoffs, which was like. Mm, bad taste but whatever mm -hmm. and then after the biggest release the last thing to conclude the, the final shape years, right yeah. Yeah. yeah they did like over 200 layoffs of the employees and then all this other stuff comes out even that's even after sony acquired them for x amount of billions of dollars yeah it left a really like at that point i was like okay i wrapped up my 10 years i i did I'm you gonna, uninstall it no, I, but I haven't. I haven't turned. Yeah, on, I know you haven't turned on your PlayStation. I will on you PlayStation. uninstall it when it when you turn it back on? I don't even know if I will turn it back on my PlayStation. <laughs> I like this whole thing. Like I really like games in itself has just kind of just fizzled out for me a little bit. Don't get me wrong, I still have like a love for them, but playing them like yeah. well, and I think that's like a lot of these companies are just. I, I think you and me talked about this one time. Is that like it, it, someone made this report where it's like any th studio such as like Bungie in the United States, like they, like the, the higher ups would rather take all that money where like, if you look at Nintendo, the reason they never have layoffs is because the higher ups take uh, like huge salary cuts. cuts, like massive salary cuts Yeah, to make sure every person can still keep working and every person gets time. Like Nintendo was able to afford to push back the, like the last legend of Zelda game. What was it? It wasn't, was it breath of the wild? Was that what it's called? Or uh, tears of the Kingdom. tears of the kingdom, which was fucking phenomenal, fucking phenomenal. The game was done a year prior. They literally said, you know what? We're going to delay it an entire year to make sure there's no bugs. Yeah. What studio does that nowadays? Not Ubisoft. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely oh, yeah. talk about that. But <laughs> Another thing that like I saw in recent, uh, aside from Destiny, that kind of just turned me off from playing video games was um, there was an stu independent studio that did a port for... Modern Warfare 2 I saw this Remastered yeah. Multiplayer This looked awesome And it was a port Did you that see this? They were not taking Any money from people All you had to do Was just buy The first remastered Of Modern so Warfare So give Activision oh. money Yeah give so Activision give Activision money. money And you get this port 
it blew up within the community and Microsoft and then they and got canceled. Yeah, Microsoft, the cease and desist. Letter. Yeah, they shut it down, which is like, why would you do that? But then I get, I get why they did. Oh yeah, it's also just a show. It's like you guys have no creative talent anymore. Like you guys cannot create a good multiplayer video game that people get excited about. I I think well, maybe not excited to you, but there's a lot of people. Like I, I look at the general going eco space. I was getting my hair cut yesterday. I'm talking to this guy, and I'm like, he's like, oh, do you play video games? I was like, yeah. And he's like, what do you play? I was like, I play Fortnite. And then he's <laughs> like, you're going to get the new COD? And I was like, yeah, probably. Like, I'm excited for it. He goes, I haven't been this fucking excited since a Call of Duty in years. He goes, like, my kid, I'm super excited to play with my kid, show him the rounds. Like, every single thing about it hypes me up. And, like, hearing, a j- like, anytime I talk to someone, like, Curtis, for instance, let's use him as an example. So he has not touched his PlayStation in two months he told me he said he will be buying this game like he's like i was gonna honestly sell it because i've just i i think people are actually really excited for this call of duty I'm not saying it's gonna be great that's my thing it's not saying that it's not that the hype and marketing isn't working they know how to market yeah. but it's the player retention once it releases yeah. because every year they release year, it and yeah. people are going to it's gonna jump and then it'll just drop off yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. That's where I'm like, Ugh. but I I understand why they sent the cease and desist. It fucking sucks. It was releasing at a if that if that mod was coming out five months ago, I don't think I'm, they would have gotten the cease and desist. If I'm the, being honest with you, yeah, I think the bigger issue was is that the game was on sale. They were selling the yeah. game on sale, and then after everyone purchased it pulled the rug right after yeah right yeah before that's it got still, but it's like, really that's, that's, that's still, just scummy that's what i'm saying I'm yeah. like, like well, that's just i'm shitty. over giving companies like this kind of like money and i'm just i i'm tired that's of every it. company yeah it, it's at almost every company at this point uh oh don't yeah don't get me wrong there's a few studios where i'm definitely excited to see how they turn out and there's definitely studios that are still producing games but those are very far in between those projects take years to make yeah but across the board i'm like eh. that that's why I mean, for me, you never know how something's going to turn out. Might come out right away, like however it might release, but then it actually comes out. How does it feel down the line? How do the patches, how do how do they support the game? How does that support feel? If that support's good, that's when you can really start to judge the game. So, yeah. none of us will really know. Like again, when Call we Duty review cuz I'm going to review Call of Duty when it comes out, well, maybe. Yeah. But uh, well, it'll be free on Game Pass, so. Oh, yeah, and you have Game Pass. But, like, that's my thing is that, like, we'll review it, and then we'll probably have to do a follow-up review six months from now. Are you still playing it? Why are you still playing it? What is the reason for still playing it? <coughs> the one thing that I was, like, actually, like, I almost consider is, like, maybe I'll buy this one, which was for the zombies. But then I realized, I'm like, okay, I'm going to pay $70 for one game mode. And the thing that also kind of annoyed me is that they were talking about, like, oh, we're going back to, like, the original, like, round-based zombies. Which, for sure, they kind of are. But the one thing that I just did not care for ever since they started introducing, like, the different perks and then the gobble gums and stuff like that. The last good zombies, in my personal opinion, that we got was with the bows. That was three. Yeah. Because it was very simple. Four, I liked four. So, this one, it is... The, the, what I And this is what I claim them. It's three and it's Cold War, but you have a choice. You get a choice. How do you want to play it? Like, what version of the zombies do you want to play? I like that they give player choice to it. So overall, it is technically Black Ops 3. But, you know, if you prefer Cold War and you want to take out, take in your loadout and stuff, you can bring your loadout in. I don't mind necessarily, like, the loadout where you can customize your guns and stuff like that. I just, like, the whole perk thing where now it becomes, like, not so much of an easy... I shouldn't say easy, but just a simple jump in, have fun with your friends, play for What do you rounds. mean perk thing, though? Haven't they always had perks and gobble? They've had gobble gum since three. Yeah, but I perks. could see it being like super convoluted with a bunch of like extra shit on there. That's too. what I'm talking about. Like, I mean, for me, it's jo- been like that since three, though. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I haven't played the, since the three. The joy, I, like, I think the appeal and the joy, at least for me, and I feel like a good a chunk of places, is just the ability to just, all right, get your friends, mm-hmm. jump in, and you don't have to worry about getting your load out. That part is like, it then, like, Phil says, yeah. like, it becomes convoluted, but now you're like, Oh, let me get this perk. You're like, just uh, a, I, I you're just a simple I mean, original Doris diff- enjoyer. Yeah. That's, yeah, a, that's all you is. And just have some fun. I don't me, wanna, that's all it really comes down to. Let me play devil's advocate, though. You love the bows, right? Yeah. Same thing. The bows are con- convoluted. 
But you could also put that back to the, you don't the have simplicity to, yeah. of when the staffs got released. Staffs are sure. also convoluted as shit. They're not convoluted. It's more of just like, all right, if you want to get this thing, you can do it. It's going to take can a hop, little Can bit. you hop in right now without looking at a guide on how to do the staffs? Oh, yeah. With Can you? you I think I you, should. Do you even know what the staffs are? No. Without a guide, could I'm he a, do it? I don't think he could. And, and that's not like intelligent level or anything. I'm no. just being honest. Oh, so for sure. that does lead to a con. I'm just playing devil's advocate here where I do think that, you know, it can be, it's, it's it, not zombies has always been convoluted since not since, um, I'd probably say black ops one, one of the later maps when they started introducing all this fucking moon random. level. Don't we're not talking about moon. <laughs> moon I love fu- moon. I fucking moon hate was, moon. Moon was fun. I liked moon, but I fucking hate that map too. <laughs> but also the thing with those staffs and bows is that it's not a core fundamental of just the game itself. Those perks and everything, you start a game and you have you have those perks. Like you have to start mixing and matching and figure that stuff out. That's what I just don't really care for. Like, let me just jump into the game for sure. I mean, the way you're talking, that's how I've been playing since they introduced all this shit. I got to get Jug. I got to eat. Like, I've been playing since then. So, like, that that's my, I got to grab this gobble gum. Like, I know what I need to grab. I I mean, that's been zombies for me since they fucking introduced all this. So, I don't know how you guys play, but those are all fundamentals to make the game. I know that they're going to do the Zombie Chronicles Part 2 on that one, right? It's it's been done forever. It's been, Zombie Chronicles 2 has been done since Black Ops 3. That, sh- that pisses me off. They should have that. I just because I feel like Black Ops Three is like the magnum opus of zombies. Oh, it is. It is because that's the one with zombies. Because that's um, right. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the one where like me and my buddies we bought and we were like, okay, this is strictly literally a zombies game. It's literally just for. I've wanted them to just make a zombies game, but I mean the the core creator left, so it doesn't even really matter. No. So I don't know. As you know, what as long as they give me maps that are fucking good. And it's not one map here, seven months <laughs> later, finally a new map. I'll be happy. That, that's all that matters to me. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. I like how we went to the reviewing segment and we weren't even going to talk about Call of Duty and then somehow we fucking talked about it. That's the joy of this podcast. Yeah, that is literally yeah. the joy of it. Do you have anything else to say about Destiny, though? Do you have anything else? Like, uh, do you want to say like what your thoughts were on the final shape? Like, was it a decent DLC at least? Oh, it was the pinnacle. Best DLC they did? Absolutely. Okay. 100 percent and without a doubt it was the it, best and that's mm-hmm. not even just my opinion that's my opinion but also it feels a like lot it's pe- a lot of people's oh everybody i don't think there's a single person that thought it wasn't good the fact that it got like n- scores across the board were just complete praise like yeah. even people that have never like stopped playing destiny years oh. before came back to play this says a lot and everybody says like this was definitely the and best. It DLC. almost got me to get back on. It almost oh, yeah. got me. It almost I, got me to buy it. That's shocking. Yeah, <laughs> and it's crazy. So but also at the same time, it's like the new people that like say like you haven't. Have you ever played Destiny? Yeah. Like, so like jumping back into it after years of not playing it, there's so much where even it's kind of hard. It's to overwhelming. Get new, yeah, there's so much to do. But that's also I guess the kind of charm of destiny is like there is so much yeah. for you to do but it's also extremely overwhelming can we go around in a circle i'm gonna ask one question you'll probably have more of the viewpoint on this i'll start with you do we get a destiny 3 no tyler um they were obviously were they developing it or did it come out that they actually were never so the whole it? thing was that there was this rumor they had so many incubation projects like marathon marathon uh, this code name Gummy Bears, which was like that, yeah. some mobile game and like another one. Um, but the, one of them was called Payback, which a lot of people thought was Destiny 3. Apparently, it was never actually Destiny 3. The fuck uh, was it? But they... Who knows? So, uh, yeah or no? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I, I think they... M- like there's a slight possibility they might just to try to save the whole brand, mm-hmm. but I think it's been going. I think it's a slow death right now. Fair enough. I yeah. I I think uh, I don't think Bungie will be a company by the end of next year. No, I think um, they Sony's will... going to completely acquire them, and there's going to be then a non-independent studio, and Sony's going to be owning them. And what and Sony will do, them. which. This happens with a lot of companies. They're basically going to take most of those workers, not all, because I, I think they're going to lay off a lot, and they're just going to move them to other studios. 
you're going to go to Santa Monica, you're going to go to this one, you're going to go to Blur Studios, and they're going to do exactly what they do with the Days Gone creators. You guys are going to be our little bitches, and you're going to make what we tell you to make. Oh, absolutely. Like, and I don't even think it's going to be like a negative thing like that from Sony's perspective. It's just going to see, yeah, we acquired you for this amount of money, and you completely just shit us. the bed. Um, I don't, and even if they do somehow, some way, are able to save Destiny for what it is, either keep Destiny for two and just expansion 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 or they make it three i think the charm will is not going to be there because it won't be coming from an independent bungee studio it'll be just oh it's a sony game yeah we're like santa monica right god of war they're kind of independent in a way they're still over like being overseen over overseen overseen thank you from sony but i feel like they really Sony just like them make what do what you and let do. you cook. We're gonna yeah, let well, you cook. They'll let them cook, and then they'll give them. You gotta hit the game out by this day. Yeah, that, and that's that's. I mean, from like an outside perspective, that's what it looks like for Sony. Spider Man Two was given a release date. They said you cannot push that back. That game has to come out by that date. Yeah. So did the game come out? Yeah. Did it have issues? Yeah, it had issues. There was things cut that maybe sucks that it was cut, but it's whatever. With that said, uh, Phil. Tell us about the Hunt Showdown. Why should I replay this game? So Hunt Showdown just released its new engine update. It's uh, right now. It's got its like biggest update ever. It's Unreal it's, Engine five now, right? I th- uh, no, it's oh, on it's the new Crytek. Crytek. Yeah, Crytek. it's the Crytek engine, and so now it's no longer Hunt Showdown. It's Hunt Showdown eighteen ninety six. Uh, they released a new map where it takes place in the Colorado Gulch. So it's beautiful landscape. It's no longer like backwater bayou. Does the Louisiana. game actually look good now? It does. I think it does. Okay. It still has its issues. Like when you load in, load in, a lot of the textures are like missing. But as you go on, it just like kind of renders everything in and it it looks better as you continue to play. Um, right now, they took out all the other maps to keep this one on showcase. I don't know. I don't remember for how long. They released it with like a battle pass that's completely free or something like that, or there's like a premium side to it. And then the uh, map itself, if you don't know how it works, Tyler, but basically it's pretty much cowboys with guns and with these monsters, you go around the map, you collect these clues, you get three clues, and then you find the bounty, which is like a monster. When you go in, you kill the bounty, and then you start to banish it, which lets everyone else on the map know where you're at. Mm. You pretty much get that one life. If you die you're, and your squad dies, you're pretty much done. Done, you're out. So you defend. You not only have to kill the boss, but you have to defend banishing it. And then once you get its token, then you have to get out with it. Oh, jeez. So it's a lot of like stress and added layers of where like you got to think – do I wait if I find the monster? Do I wait for someone else to start it? Do I kill them and then kill the bounty, or do gotcha. I get the bounty as fast as I can, let everyone know that I'm here, here, and then try to defend and fend for myself? Hmm. So it's a lot of strategy into it. Uh, this one, they do have like they could even do like two bounties on the map at the same time. Usually it's only up to 12 players and depending on how you do it, like solos or trios or duos, um, they introduced their, I don't know if it's their first cause there's like a gator boss. Mm-hmm. I had never got to encounter it, but it's like kind of bit the first like open world boss where he's just on the map. You can't find him. He's just somewhere in a location. You have to use like uh, they call it dark site where it's like a vision thing and you have to like listen to him. On, and then you just go to that direction kind of deal. Gotcha. So, so far, um, my review of it is that I really like the way how the game feels now. It feels way better. Uh, the textures, like I mentioned before, they still have like a lot of the blotchy stuff. It could look like ass sometimes. So I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But. Um, Which always blows me, like blows me, blows me away <laughs> on this game because Crisis. I remember you played Crisis, right, Tyler? And I know you a played little a little bit. bit of yeah. it. Those games always look fucking great. Mm-hmm. Crisis like, 3. It, it like blows my mind like how this game isn't like... On a crisis level. Yeah, yeah. Like you think it would be. I think it has to do with like the way how they make their maps and just the overall design. I wonder if it's just too much. Maybe. Are they a ways. big studio? No. No. Oh. I don't think they are. Um, 
it's just funny to me that this is like from the guys who made Crisis. Yeah. They're just fucking around in the bayou with a bunch of monsters. I know. Like, but like, like the thing is, this game's been out for over 10 years and yeah. it's still receiving the support that it has. Better than most games. <laughs> as we just talked about. Yeah. So overall, I, I like it. Um, there is a couple issues, though. Uh, the UI, they decided to overhaul the entire UI in the game in the main mm-hmm. menu. Uh, I think it's worse. Okay. Uh, I think there's a lot of issues with it when you're like selecting your hunter and you're doing Mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, the, like, it will give you like a, you know how like items, when you look over them, they give you like a description Mm -hmm. box, the description box stays there and you can overlap it. And it looks like the windows, like pop up screens when it airs out. Yeah. So you don't, he knows uh, that it's, it's a work thing. (laughs) It's ugly as shit. So. But um, overall, I mean, I like it. It's a good game, and it usually goes on sale. It's, I, I'm, I'm a Hunt fanboy. I yeah. love the game. It's always, I love that. yeah. It's the grand. I, I call it the granddaddy of all extraction shooters. Cool. So, what would you give it out of ten? It's an eight. I definitely. Wow. Think, Do you know, last week he gave a fucking ten out of ten. I've never heard this man give a ten, out of, a 10. 10 out of ten. What did you give? Aliens Romulus. Oh yeah, Alien Romulus. He gave a ten. Out I of think 10 it's too. a must see. Which, like, shocked me that he said that. That movie was fantastic. It's yeah. so good. And then I yelled at him about Furiosa because he gave it an eight, and I said, bullshit. And one more higher. You no, know, Furiosa definitely deserves yeah. a nine. But, okay. I, I, I like your review. I re-downloaded the game. I will play it one day. <laughs> yeah, one day. I, I remember I bought it because you were hyping it, and I played a couple matches, and I really liked it, but I just never went back. So Yeah, it could be tough, and it's also, like, hard, too, because... Like your character, you buy ba- uh, hunters, so everything relies on your hunter. And if you lo- like, if you die, you lose that hunter. You got to mm. restart. So mm-hmm. I like it. It's cool. Extraction shooters, whatever. Guys, I saw the Crow, the brand new Crow movie. Did you? I, I saw your. You didn't. Re- I, you, I saw your uh, reaction. Your, your reel. Yeah. On YouTube, or you yeah. probably won't actually give it a full review. But no, this is my full review. Um, I've also heard some other people saying like. <laughs> It's bad, but it's so bad it's good. Where it's one of no, those movies. No, no. It's it's the same issue with Borderlands. It's fucking boring. <laughs> it's boring. Do you guys mind if I spoil the movie? Go ahead. Go ahead. Spoilers, everybody. No, who gives a fuck? Don't go see the movie. It's a waste of time. Uh, the Crow. I, you know what's sad? I still liked it a little bit more than Borderlands. So you're saying you would watch that over Borderlands? I would rather watch Paint Dry than either of them. That's fair. Like genuinely. So I've never seen The Crow. Until Monday, before I watched this one. That you never saw the original? I never saw the original one. So my wife was like, we are not allowed to go see the new one unless you watch this. I was like, fuck it. I'll watch it Monday. So I watched it Monday, and I fucking loved it. I loved it so much. Five out of five, ten out of ten. Absolute awesome movie. Yes, it has the cheese of the 90s, but it is so badass. Have you seen The Crow? I know. I have not. Oh, it's, it's a great one. It's a great one. But... So I got excited. I said, okay, this is from the director of Ghost in the Shell's remake, which I'm in the minority. I really like that. I don't know. I know you saw it. You and me saw it together. Yeah. Did you ever see the Ghost in the Shell remake? I never saw The live saw, action? No, I, I, I've watched a yeah. few episodes of the anime. Oh, okay. So visually, the live action was actually really cool. I liked it. It wasn't the greatest movie, but it, visually, it was awesome. And I was like, if anything, he'll be able to nail down the visuals of the crow. No. No, it looks like modern day fucking Chicago. Like, so, you know what? Let me, let me be nice. I'll give so there's like no I'll goth give, to it. Not really, no. Besides him having goth makeup, no, not really. And like, so to give my pros, so first off, well, I don't know. I'm a little jumbled. Spoiler alert, they don't kill him until halfway through the movie. So he doesn't get his crow powers till midway through the movie. So what's the first half of the movie? Their love story. I get what they were trying to do. They have no chemistry. So I didn't give a shit. I didn't give a fuck for them at all. Um, th- that was a that was a big part. Second, so yeah, that that's like my biggest issue is that first off, I get what you're trying to do. I appreciate it, but it just doesn't work. So then he gets his crow powers, but then they convolute it with all this mythology, and the crow like it's there following him, but it's never like a major thing. You know how it's his weakness in the mm-hmm. original. No, the crow's just always watching above. He doesn't use the crow to peek into things. No, the crow's just following him. Never has anything else to that. So the mythology of this is that it's like this person who 
gives him the power of the crow. And if he kills everyone, he can bring Shelly back to life. Okay, fine. Like, you want to add in mythology. I, I don't think it's needed. It takes too long to build up. The <coughs> villain, this is where me and my wife disagree. I thought the vil- the concept of the villain was cool. It's a guy who made a deal with the devil and can basically like like so it's cool to have two different supernatural people yeah too bad their fight is one minute and it's boring as shit it's boring as shit ask me how many action scenes are in this movie guys how many how many two really and two and a half three that's about it ask me how ask me how many are good i'm gonna assume one yep one one great action scene because he can just take as many bullets. It doesn't matter. And he's just getting shot and just, it's awesome. The fight choreograph. Great. The rest of the movie is just dull. It's boring. It doesn't look visually interesting at all. Uh, the new mythology stuff I thought was pretty terrible. If I'm being completely honest, I, I just wasn't really a big fan of it. And in the end of the day, I walked out of the crow and I was so happy. I didn't pay for it. Cause like I won free tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy. And I, I told my wife, I said, if you don't like this movie, just whisper to me that you're ready to leave and we'll leave. She never whispered to me. So I was like, okay, maybe she's liking this. I'll just, I'll just go along for it. Movie ends. I was like, what do you think? She goes, that was awful. I'm like, <laughs> we could have saved time. We could have fucking left. Like, what were you doing? Finish what you start. Yeah, she, that's what she said. She said, I was interested to at least see where it went. How so? So I don't know. It, it's not even the definition of fine. It's the definition of this was fucking boring. <coughs> and that's my big issue with the movie. Do you think they played it too safe? No. No, I don't even think it was safe. I think they were just trying to do so many things. The movie was stuck in development hell for almost 20 years. That's so what I imagine happening is every time a new writer came in, they just left everything that writer had let in. And then they came in and another writer did it. Another writer did it. Another writer did it. And it just never. Just puzzle pieces, essentially. Yeah, like, I don't know what they were trying to think or do. So, this was a 3 out of 10. So, with The Crow being as bad as it was, and it's a remake to a classic, how do you feel about Nosferatu coming out in December? Oh, it's going to be awesome. You think so? Yeah, I have no... I that That's Robert Eggers. If Robert Eggers would have directed The Crow, it probably would have been 30 times better. Mm. Maybe. I don't even think he would have. I just heard a perspective of just like someone in my family talking about it because like he was a huge fan of The Crow and I was like yeah and I was like but I but he's like what about Nosferatu because Bill Skarsgård will play Nosferatu and I was like oh I think it'll be good he's like but what about The Crow like like two different directors he wasn't the issue he tried he tried as The Crow yeah it's just yeah it's not his fault so what would you give his performance just Bill Skarsgård is him five but that's as much as you can do with this just, terrible script. Yeah. yeah. Like he doesn't really talk a lot. Like there's not just, there's no personality. Like, I don't know. There's, there's fine ideas. It's just, it, it's not worth watching when you have the original. Nosferatu is different. Cause I, I know people who've seen that fucking Ooh. shit and every single one of them said it's like a 10 out of 10. I, so that's cool. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm really excited. I'm excited for that. For that. You no know movie I watched last night. What? Sting. The fuck is that? It's about a spider, an alien spider. I know what you're talking about. Did it come out this year? I think so. Yeah. Is, Is it, it like a giant it's spider? It's super cheesy, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of cheesy. It's about like a girl who like finds a little baby spider. It looks like a black widow okay. and feeds it stuff. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Oh, God. Mm. So if you have arachnophobia, it's probably yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, I thought it was a fun movie. Okay. I think it was like an actual entertaining movie. I love that. Guys, X-Men 97. So I made you guys watch it this week because this is personally my favorite show of the year. Um, I grew up with the animated series, but I also didn't have like, like while I grew up with it and I had nostalgia for it, I didn't really expect anything out of the series. I I just watched it to watch it. And I came away like blown away (coughs) specifically after episode four. I find that episode four, five, five for me just really took me back. And then the rest of the season bar none was just great. And there's a lot of drama going on with the lead writer. Uh, who got fired uh, from Disney. And we'll go over that in a little bit about what uh, Bo DeMeo has done. But what did you guys think of the show so far? Out of 10, skip the seven. It's an eight for me right now. It's an eight right now? You. You got to skip the seven. 
I know. I wouldn't give it an eight, so I'd give it a six. Okay. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, why? We'll start with you. So, animation's great. Yeah. Um, there were a few episodes where I was like, oh, this is interesting. It was fun. Um, at times, I felt like they didn't really connect so much. Like, it seemed like there's different things that definitely mm-hmm. would carry over from the previous season or previous episode. I just, overall, I'm like, I just didn't love it. Fair enough. And because I can't give it a seven, if I could, I'd give yeah. it a seven. That's why, yeah, because sevens are I two. What did you say? Oh, you always skip the seven because it's a comfort number. I would, I would say it's a comfort. I'd say like a it is seven. A, it, for it most is. review most review sites. It's a comfort number. Yeah, I, I get that. I get it, but I also wouldn't want to give anything a six because I feel like once you approach a six, it's like you really didn't really care for it at all. There are some things. And that's I where did. it pushes you to go to an eight. But I couldn't give it an eight because I an eight would tell an eight signifies to me that I would rewatch it again or I'd recommend it. Would I recommend it? It depends on who I'm talking to. There you go. So an eight for some people, a six for others. If you yeah. want to put it that way, yeah. sure. Yeah. You? Um, the reason why I give it an eight is that one of the things that I really like about the cartoon is the how they still carry this very adult themes throughout mm-hmm. the show. Um, you obviously th- see through like Jean Grey's pregnancy and Cyclops' relationship. There's a lot That's of like... That's what sells me on the show is how deeply rich thematic it is yeah there's a lot of like adult themes that carry on and they go through these adult issues but they still keep the charm where like wolverine is still saying oh crap yeah (laughs) you know bub what's going on you know like things like that and it they still uh they're really self-aware that it's it was originally a kids' show, so they still keep the same like language. But they know their audience is adults. But there is, it's an adult, so they go through this like really adult like themes. And I haven't seen stuff like that since maybe the original, the original. Teen Titans, yeah, when that came out. That's so. a good. I love the original Teen Titans. Um, you finished five, right? Yes. Okay. Gambit's death fucked me up. I watched it on my I lunch was wild. at work. And when I came back to my desk, the kid who sits behind me, he hadn't watched it yet. My eyes were red. He's like, you okay? And I was like, did you watch 97 yet? He's like, no. I was like, watch it on your lunch. So then he watches on his lunch. He comes back. His eyes are red. (laughs) And I'm like, yeah. I love the character of Gambit. And episode five, just what they did with Rogue and Gambit, um, specifically with the relationship. And then like everything on that island. Like it, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. Like the decimation of fucking mutants. Like that is... Oh, can you go shut the door? Yeah. <laughs> Just I'm pressing the lock. Oh, okay. But it it blew me the fuck away. Like, I, I still cannot believe what I saw. I would definitely, like, I don't want to just say I didn't enjoy it. There are highlights, and I want to point those out. Um, the highlights of it, for sure, were definitely, like, I think it was, like, episode four. With um, Jean Grey and like her twin or whatever. Oh, with Mr. Sinister? Yeah. Yeah, I and love seeing that episode. The those were oh. awesome. I, I thought that was the highlight of yeah. it, was seeing those monsters and mm-hmm. demons and stuff. That I really enjoyed. Um, Gambit, I mean, Gambit, having Gambit in there just made me want a Gambit movie live action. Yeah. Eventually we will. I uh, think I, eventually. I, I, not, I, not solo. I don't think we'll ever get a solo, but eventually we will get one. That's or at least him in live action again. I hope Come so. Come back to the mic and say that. I can't. I can't hear you. When you... That's a fine. I was gonna say. You think it? Oh, sorry. That's what happens when you're sick. You you lose all sense. Yeah, perception. I can tell. I'm gonna spray you down with some Lysol. I know. But do you think it's gonna be Channing? Um, no. I think we see him again, but mm. I I don't think so. I let me let me put it this way: If Marvel ends up doing what I hope they do which is would be very smart of them where after this whole multiverse saga, they do separate stories that are singular and it's kind of like what they're doing with Joker. You have Joaquin Phoenix playing Joker. It'll never tie into anything else. And that's okay. You can do these one off stories and that's it. And you get more adventures with that character, a Channing Tatum's Gambit, uh, Wesley Snipes blade, whatever it may be. Um, but I don't think they're gonna do it. I think th- I think that studio has way too much on their fucking hands to go out and do it. And I just I don't think they can. They 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 can't even do fucking six good projects in a year. You know they can't do TV and movie. 
mm-hmm. without being restricted. So unless they have another Kevin Feige, like the same, like unless they can clone Kevin Feige and let him be able to work on that many projects at once. No, that's why a lot of those movies weren't doing as well is because Kevin would be over here <coughs> working on these six <coughs> movies and shows, but then these six movies and shows had no direction, no nothing. So, anyways, uh, do you guys have anything else to say before I talk about what the creator did with X-Men 97? <laughs> uh, um, no. No? No. All right, so Bo DeMeo, he's the creator of X-Men 97. He also worked on The Witcher, Moon Knight, and Strange, or, uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Well, um, he got fired a week before X-Men 97 came out, guys. He's... Wow. Now, why did Disney fire him? No one knew. No one knew until this last week where allegations against Bo DeMeo uh, came forward of sexual misconduct. It turns out he may have actually been sending photos of himself in superhero poses naked. Why am I never surprised about stuff like this? It's always some yeah. sexual now again, allegations. These are, these are rumors. I, I'm not saying I've seen the photos. I'm not saying this is real. But it's in the entertainment news, and I want to talk about it because, like you said, what the fuck? Now, his like lawyers his have obviously... Spider-Man just butt-ass naked. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> That's what I was thinking about, too. <laughs> Also, uh, apparently, he was groping people. Uh, oh. So, okay, no, well, I mean... Yeah, yeah. Again, I, so not, it's like again, not things. surprised. Yeah. Jeez. Now, his lawyer has denied all the allegations from him. Um, of course. Saying, uh, let's see, the truth will be revealed. After their Disney Plus disaster, Marvel wants to mislead with alleged contract breaches over tweets. So he's saying it's because of his tweets. Because he's, um, like, he was posting, like, gay tweets of, like, X-Men characters and stuff. What they really should start doing with, like, these directors and stuff is, like, just same thing with cops. Is like, you just have to have a camera on you at all times. Like, this is, (laughs) like, it's ridiculous how common so, this thing is but yeah because he said my client never sent any lewd videos or photos to his direct reports that is a bald-faced lie and defamatory no one who reported Bo to hr received an inappropriate photo or video and he goes on and on from there yeah that's what your lawyer is supposed to do yeah um i don't know i don't know if this is real or not but uh, it's in the I'm- entertainment news and to give us another reason to talk about x-men 97 so that is that. Um, it's like the whole physical abuse allegations for what's his face. That was um, the next big baddie. I can't. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Majors. Yeah. It's like the same thing. Uh, almost, it just uh, yeah. there's different allegations. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah, that it's always going to be denied, but it's always going to come out that yeah, it's true. Yeah. Damn, Phil. Phil, I'm going to call Man, against it's you. It's just crazy. That one day you just beat me while we were at Comic Con. You just started hitting me when we got back to the Airbnb. I believe it. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, let's talk about one last thing before we jump into Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, Borderlands 4 was announced. We're just going to quickly say I'm excited for it. Uh, I'm hopefully, excited. it's good. <coughs> I have heard a lot of rumors for it, so I want to pitch what I've heard to you guys and let me know if you guys are excited for this or not. So, apparently, it is going to be an open world. Obviously, that's that's what we expect, but Destiny like. So, it's and more than just four players playing at once, more MMO ish. I'm okay with this. I'm excited for it. I've also heard they might be changing the tone of this game. I found that out yesterday. That There are rumors that they're going to start slowly drifting away more from the comedy and actually go for more dramatic type of storytelling. How do you guys feel about that? And just in general, Thumbs the structure down. of the game. Um, Thumbs down. You? Honestly, I stopped caring about the story after three. Uh, <laughs> so to me, I think I'll get the game. If the gunplay feels better and if there's like better customization for like the guns, because I know in three they were doing some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. If they expand on that, then I'm that's where I'm at. I'm all about the gameplay at this point. I could care less about the story. Cool. It peaked that too. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. I, I, I think they should keep the comedy aspect. I think that's I agree. what keeps Borderlands as a charm looter shooter for what it is. Um, I've had like there's some hilarious creativity and jokes that they put in like even just side quests. I remember yeah. there was a side quest in two that was you're trying to get this gun. It's called the Bane, but in like as you're getting this or finding this weapon, it's like oh every person that's cursed because everybody that's had it kills themselves. Yeah, and then when you get it, you realize like oh every time you shoot it, it's just like a voice just ah yeah. And, like, when you're shooting it, like, the recoil is absolutely atrocious. You 
walk slow with it. Makes it makes you want to kill yourself. Yeah, is basically it's like what their you, whole it makes was. you not want to uh, use this gun. So I appreciate the creativity and just like the tongue in cheek mm. uh, things they do in that game. We'll see how it turns out. Fair enough. All right, really, Tyler. Quick. You can segue us in. What are me and Phil reviewing yeah. this week? <laughs> wow. How has Outlaws been? So Star Wars, <laughs> I'm going to wait because you coughed. Because uh, I got to cut it. I'm going to clip it out. Oh, but it, No, you're fine. You're sick. It's all good. So Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, as you guys are watching this, this is our clip out version of this. You can check out the full podcast on Thursday when it releases. But... Um, Star Wars Outlaws, Phil, let's just share our score real fast. You go with yours, I'll go with mine, and then give us a little bit of detail about the game, like the story wise, what it's about, and then we'll review it. And then Tyler will, of course, ask us some questions. Okay, so uh, right now my review score is sitting at a 6 out of 10. Perfect. Um, as far as the story goes, it follows K Vess. She's kind of been like a growing up thief. She lives in what is a Kento Bite? Is that what Kento it's called? Bite, yep. yeah, the Kento planet Bite, yep. The planet from Last Jedi. With the horse racing. Oh. Mm-hmm. So she she grows up there. Uh, th- she was supposed to do like a really big score. Score. It doesn't turn out the way that she wants it to. And now she's in this confinement where she's not only in trouble from the place that she tried to heist from, but she also has a death mark upon her. And it's about her just trying to wash herself of that, figure out what's going on, and also just try to get that big score yeah. too. And that's what I was about to say. In the end of the day, it's about pulling off the biggest heist in the galaxy. Yeah. Um, Sounds so, very similar to Star Wars 1313. In a lot of ways, yeah. I mean, so for me, my score, and this is so far, guys, we have not beaten the story yet. It is a very long game. Very There's long. a lot of stuff to do um, where I'll start being like, okay, I'm just going to push through the story, and then it's like, shit, now I want to do like these 30 other things to the side. Yeah, we both have, what, 15 hours logged in? 15, I'm thinking so. about 16, 17. Um. So right now, my score is an 8 out of 10. Uh, I really, really like this game. And that's surprising because we were talking shit about this game. Yeah, I was talking mad shit about this game. About about, (laughs) like a couple podcasts ago. And for me, so the reason I'm really a fan of it and just like my first impressions is a lot of people were hyping this as Grand Theft Auto in Star Wars universe. And yeah, to a certain extent it is. Like you can get like, what is it called? An Empire like a wanted level but from the empire mm-hmm. and like they send death troopers if you're like on the highest mount of it like oh, it, like it's cool but for me this is actually more of uncharted it's uncharted open world in the star wars universe and once i put it into perspective that that is what it is that's when i started liking the game more now the developers of this have made division one and two and they know how to craft an open world and i will say for the most part i'm always interested the worlds, and it, feel free to disagree with me if I'm wrong, or if you disagree, the worlds feel so fleshed out and so well done. Th- There's so many people walking around, specifically in the towns. I always find myself interested to like see like just mm-hmm. little interactions. And I found myself where I'm just walking through and say I start talking to a merchant, all of a sudden the these stormtroopers come up and start harassing him. And I had the opportunity to A, shoot them and kill them and get a wanted level, B, get a uh, pay them off and bribe them to leave or C tell them off and probably get arrested i chose uh shooting them mm. oh i think i know which one the yeah. market guy yeah but yeah. i've had multiple times where something like that where someone else walks up and tries to and it's those little things that make you feel like you are actually in this world it's that immersive there's immersive breaking stuff and we'll talk yeah. about that in the issues but the fact that it can sell me and, and this is what really i do not have time to play video games i do not have time the fact that I've been wanting to go back and play this and I'm excited to see, like I'll say the story's fine. It's okay. Uh, yeah. and we'll talk about that in my mixed and cons. Like it's, it's whatever, but I, I like Kay. I like Kay Vess. Yeah. Uh, she's actually not a bad character. I like yeah, her too. Her little creature she has is named Nyx and it's mm-hmm. fun. You can make him pickpocket people and like steal stuff and bring it to you. Um, he can plant traps on like when you're like uh, going into places and the combat very well done like for, when you start upgrading your pistol because it's only one pistol and you can pick up like certain guns and like use them for a gotcha. little bit i like it like it's cool like at first i was like this is this isn't the best but once you start upgrading like it's cool like i love going into a place rolling around shooting someone making nicks at the same time attack someone while then i run up and start knocking someone in the face meleeing it, it's cool like I, yeah. I like it um the speeder bike's fun 
Uh, the combat in space is cool. Uh, Phil, go with some of your pros as well. Anything you yeah. agree with me? or um, I was going to say the... I, I was pleasantly surprised because I, I was really expecting for it to be a little bit less than what it was. Mm -hmm. um, the combat feels fine. For me, personally, like... I've always been about like player choice and just like having more than just one weapon to a lot of That's things. That's fair. So to me, like the combat suffices for me, but to if you're going to be playing the game, it's kind of like what you experience in the first 30 minutes you're going to be doing in the 15 yeah. hour. Yeah. And and mark. that's and that's the one thing I will say if you are not a fan of the, what you're doing, you may get tired of it later on. So yeah. it can be mundane. If so. Yeah. So like to me, I'm not excited about getting into a gunfight. I'm, it's more to me about what I could get away with than what mm -hmm. I can actually like do. Yeah. That is actually kind of fun to like, like you're because they have a dead eye like from Red Dead. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll use it and then like I'll hit them all and be like, okay, cool. I got away with it. Like no yeah. one, no one came. No alarms got sounded off like it. It's fairly so, cool. I give them credit to that. Um, the other the one thing that I really do like is the reputation system. Yes, this is awesome. So, um, so you're in the underworld, which is the first big Star Wars thing to really ever dive into the underworld. Even Mandalorian doesn't really dive into this, mm -hmm. and Book of Boba Fett fucking didn't either. But uh, explain yeah. it. Yeah, it's really so cool. basically the way how it works. Instead of like, because usually a lot of Ubisoft games, and I would even say like Bethesda games, they give you like different factions, mm -hmm. and it's like a thirty-hour grind to max yeah. rep. This one, instead, you get three different factions to work with. It's the Huts, the Crimson Dawn, and oh, nice. the the Pikes. Yeah. So no, there's a fourth one. I don't know if you've gone to it. There is a fourth one. Oh, there's a fourth one. I won't one. say what it is, yeah. but there's a fourth one. But so there's these factions and the way how it works is that they play off of each other. So a lot of these contracts that you take and onboard actually kind of mess with each other. And so it's always about these cartels getting the upper hand over each other and you have to pick and choose. Mm. And as you kind of favorite one, the others will start to go down. But it makes sense. It's not like, oh, I did this random thing and decided to turn it into this guy instead. So I lost rep for everyone else. It doesn't work like that. You're like, by the, the end. yeah, the huts want you to go over to the pikes and mess with their stuff. And if you get caught or whatever, you'll lose reputation with the pikes. But if you actually don't get caught, you won't lose rep with him. And then you'll gain rep with the interesting. And then so it's cool. Yeah. And then there's other things with that where it's like, you might take on a mission for the job of the hut. And it might be like, go and steal this information from the Crimson Dawn. So you go and do it, but by the end, you have the choice to tell the Crimson Dawn, hey, I'm st the, the Huts are trying to fuck you over. And then you get rep. So then you end up fucking the Huts over <laughs> anyways. Yeah. So it is really cool. And then with that, like when you go to these certain planets, certain planets are like taken over. Like Tatooine is obviously the Huts. Like it's all Huts everywhere. Yeah. But like I'm in really bad reputation with them. So I can't go to a lot of places on Tatooine. Like I can't go to their marketplace. Like there's certain specified like black market people that you can buy special shit from that help your character grind out more and is like either better armor or better charms and stuff to make your experience better. And every, I've noticed all of them have different trinkets to what your play style is. The Crimson Dawn are more stealthy. So if you go to them and buy their stuff, it helps you with your stealth stuff. So I actually think that's actually one of the smartest things they do. Mm -hmm. And this is the other thing I'll say. When I heard this was Ubisoft, I was like, great. I'm going to be climbing towers. Yeah, to climbing the towers. Maps, there's going to be. It's yeah. not. There's not much. Uh, clear the outpost, climb the tower, unlock yeah. a fourth of the core of the map through your vision thing. Yeah. It's Can I actually say this? This is the, it is an Ubisoft game in the end of the day, but yeah. it is the least Ubisoft open world game that we've gotten yet. Yeah, I call it the the Ubi uh, formula. Yeah, but it's typical. overall, it's not. It's not. And that's what I really like. Now, are some of the missions a little bit repetitive? Like, let's let's dive into some of the issues. Uh, are some of the missions a little bit repetitive? Yeah, for the most part, it's sneak in, do this, blow up this, attack this guy, and that's most open. Like when I really started thinking, I'm like, that's most open world stuff. Like, say what you will, <coughs> Grand Theft Auto is kind of the same. Sometimes you just do more wilder shit, and I don't know if there will be wilder shit later on. I'm like, just for perspective, I am almost done with the story. And a lot of the stuff has been a little bit of the same. I would have liked a little bit more of a mission variety. Mm -hmm. But as a kickoff to this Star Wars Outlaws, it is a lot better than I expected it to be. And I don't know if my, 
my low expectation because I was like a little excited for it and then like a lot more stuff started coming out and I was like this does not look good from an enjoyment perspective how does it compare to because I never played it but I know you oh Fallen sure, yeah I'm pretty sure both of you guys have played it enjoyment yeah. level uh, I still like Fallen more because I'm more of a story guy so mm -hmm. I like story stuff more but I will say this I like the open world more here the open world in Outlaws is pretty good. Um, it's, I think it's I'm better just, than Jedi Order and stuff Yeah, like I think just like Jedi Order has like an upper hand for me in just like the gameplay aspect, like what you're doing in the gameplay loop. Just that Souls-like. It's, it's more Souls-like on that. So, so it's two different gameplay loop. It really depends on what you're thinking. But in terms of like open world and wanting to explore, I am more fascinated in exploring Outlaws than Jedi Order. I also think a lot of that is because Je Jedi Order is very much you're on your own, where Outlaws, you're literally going to a town, walking around, playing fucking Sabacc, betting, gambling. Like, you're actually able to do a lot of shit in these towns, and that's the thing that, like, wins me over in terms of an immersive level. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really good question. Um, any others you got for us? Um, yeah, what's, like, your biggest downfall of this game? Biggest downfall? Um... Like, what's your biggest critique? Like, what is something that they could do better? Uh, I mean, mission variety, I think, is a big thing. Um, it just really depends on how you are as a player. Mm -hmm. Because then you can say the same thing. Well, Assassin's Creed is almost the same. Yeah, that, that is true. Assassin's That's what I was going to say. But like, what you're telling thing. me, like, this sounds like Assassin's Creed esque, but again, yeah. there's like a few different things that they've added to but make it's, it. But it's it's more Uncharted, and that's more. where like I like because Uncharted kind of ha does have the same gameplay loop. I I would have liked a little bit more of a tighter story, um, in terms of like what you're doing but i also like can't say that fully because i like i don't know if there's like an emotion like there's an emotional depth to the character like you learn about her past and stuff which i like um it just hasn't like gripped me where i'm like this is like one of the best characters ever but i like her enough to, like i compare it to uncharted one story <coughs> it's really it's really entertaining it's fun i like this character enough to be like i'd go on another adventure with her yeah no, that's her. where i'm at it feels like uncharted one I actually kind of like her personality. She's, Me too. Um, she's not annoying. Yeah, she's not annoying. She's just like kind of like a new up and coming thief, big trying to dream big, right? And she's like obviously doesn't know a lot of the things, but she just goes along like, oh, yeah, I totally know that. Or I totally, yeah, totally. I've done this before. But she plays it off in a way that's more like comedic, like she's new to all this. Gotcha. She's not very like self-observed to no. like being like it's ignorance it's coming off as like oh you know i have no clue what i'm doing but i'm i'm down for the ride yeah when which she is has really to fly cool. a ship for the first time it's really funny yeah because she's just flipping on buttons yeah. she's like i don't know what the fuck i'm doing and yeah. like it is like when you're trying to like when you're trying to fly it's not really the best movement the first time because it's her you're coming mm. from her it doesn't really teach you what to do you're just trying to escape so during this whole time you're playing obviously like what it's about mm -hmm. obviously she takes a job didn't really work out what are you doing through this whole time that you're playing robbing people but, but what 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 is it leading up to a heist the biggest you're robbing to without getting into spoilers it's with it's you're robbing a very rich person mm. who put the death mark on her right yeah yeah so that's the that's it's the basically kind of the so she can get away and live a very good life gotcha and not have to worry about it so, um yeah Phil, what's your biggest critique? Uh, my biggest critique comes down to the gameplay, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Ubisoft games kind of, uh, I'm a little bit biased about them because I've played like Division for so long, but the AI can, I feel like can be abused in some ways. And I do so agree with that, yeah. The, the combat aspects, they don't really have self-preserverance. They just kind of swarm you. So if you get in a fight with like 10 stormtroopers and you try to take cover, right? They're just slowly advancing. <laughs> on you. They're just like out in the like open. impending doom. Yeah, that kind of way. and some though are better. Yeah, because the Jabba's fucking pig dudes, hell no, dude. Mm. They bum rush you. I had six of them, and you they don't die from your normal attack. Yeah, you have to do other things to kill them. I got stuck in a corner while six of them was bum rushing me, and I just kept like dodging and uh, yeah, everything so, like that. To me, like that's where like the biggest weak point. I don't like when like difficulty comes from the fact that like the AI's top priority is just to kill you and have like no like, like self yeah no self perseverance to be like at least make it more engaging you know yeah. Yeah. let them be in cover and you know it doesn't it feels, feel like they have autonomy 
Yeah, they just kind of just rush you and they just beat you by numbers more so exactly. than like gotcha. engaging gameplay. So yeah. that's where I struggle. And that's why I said like when you experience the combat in the first 30 minutes, you're going to be experiencing that same kind of feeling in that loop at hour 16, hour 20. How yeah. sure. How does uh, like the graphics and visual so that look? that was my because next, that was one thing uh, I saw was like I saw like explosions then it looked too so great that's my like mixed that. some of it looks awesome some of it looks very hyper detailed uh, the CGI cutscenes are really well done um, I like the droid that she's with by the way I didn't mention oh, that the Endy yeah Endy's awesome he's one of my new favorite droids like automatically he's awesome but the graphics for me. And we're playing without a day one patch. So just know when you boot this up, the same thing happened with uh, f the last Star Wars Fallen Jedi. The day one patch fixed the <laughs> graphics a lot on the face. Her, the detail on her face looks weird. Yeah. Without cutscenes. And then when it goes into a cutscene, you can definitely tell like more detail, stuff like yeah. that, which is like most. I don't know how that's going to be. I don't know how that's going to mm -hmm. be six months down the road, all that stuff. There was a scene that I had where you have to like upgrade your biker. Um, yeah. You get like a speed bike and you go to like a water planet. So you have to go and over the get water. Like, yeah. So you have to get a part that lets you go over the water. Uh, there's like a cut scene where she's like talking to the mechanic and their faces is like almost in a. Like Play Doh? Yeah, yeah, in a neutral, like, face tone. So I'm just talking oh, to you his, like this. And his face, yeah. And his, his face. eyes don't blink. He's just kind of looking at you like this. And was, he's talking with all these emotions. And he's just, oh, I don't know where to find all these parts. I'm doing this and that. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. whoa. So that is the biggest thing is that some of it looks great. Some of it doesn't look great. The planets overall in the landscape, like when you're soaring through on your speeder, do look good. It's more of like when you're talking to someone. Yeah. It's really not the greatest, but it could be easily fixed with like, and not, and then that's not defending the studio. That's, I'm just saying like, that's, this is usually what happens with most of these is, Oh, for sure. Game there's, comes there's out and then they fix it. So, well, you also guys, you guys also have an early copy. When yeah. Is it, like, when does the game officially release? So three days early, if you bought the special edition and then I think f as this, is, as this full podcast is coming out, I think Thursday or Friday, and then as this clip out is coming out, it's later. Early night. access comes out for three days prior. So it's there. like what the 26th, that's something like that. Yeah. That's Monday. Oh, you can so play as early that's as Monday. So that's why the embargo is Monday. So yeah. people can play it. So. so hopefully, I mean, they get that day one. Yeah. Patch well, and probably fix it. I, I would be pretty shocked. If they don't have a day one patch on Monday. So, yeah. but I mean, overall for me, am I going to keep playing it? Yeah. I'm, I'm interested. Will I play it when the add ons come out, when the story stuff comes out later down the road? Maybe. I might, but I it's it's intrigued me enough to where I would be interested in them doing a second one, and this is usually what happens with Ubisoft games. The first game, solid, good ideas. Sequel comes out way better. Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Division. Mm -hmm. uh, Division one anything? was really good. For yeah, the uh, first one was really good, but I really I like the good. second one more personally. Oh, Watch Dogs, I like two a lot more than one. Um, we're not going to talk about three, but you know, um, that's how it goes. So anything else you guys want to say before we finish this up and do our rapid fire star Wars video game questions? Oh, that was actually going to be um, my question is like, sorry, with the film, if you could create from the ground up, you can't say like, Oh, uh, old Republic from the ground up, create your own star Wars video game. How, what, how would you create it? What would it be like? I would want it because I feel like a lot of Star Wars games go around about like Jedi's and everything. And Jedi's are cool, but I've always liked the grittiness that Star Wars has always been. So I would want to do like more of a, if I could, I would do an M rated, uh, mature, like open world where you're like either a bounty hunter or you're a part of like actual crime organization. So this game. Yeah. It's just not M rated. <laughs> yeah. But I, I know what he's saying. No, I know what he's I, saying too. I mean, yeah. I said from the ground up, but also like if someone asked me that question, it would be basically what Star Wars 1313 was. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think dark uh, and gritty. I would also let like different path round choices. It would be much more like akin, a much more in depth system of like cyberpunk's life system. <sighs> That's cool. That's yeah. what I would want. Like if you want to be a bounty hunter, fine. You know, you could either be the, back in the alley hitman or you could be a mandalorian who yeah 
was gone. raised and born. To yeah, them. yeah. Different. Uh, I would want them to have different kits and have them feel and play differently. Yeah. I love that. That's um, what like I would it want. being a net runner versus yeah. like a ninja versus yeah. a gunner. That'd be cool. I, I 100% agree with you. I think if they were able to do some kind of some way, make it mature, get that, put it, that grittiness into it. But also, mm. like you said, like cyberpunk style. Yeah. yeah. I'm right there with you. What uh, about you? for me, um, I'm not going to take that because that is kind of what I would want to, but I'd go a little bit different. I'm a big fan of Republic Commando. I think that game is so fucking awesome. So I would want another first person Star Wars game during the Clone Wars. Doesn't have to be Republic Commando. M rated. Deep. Brothers in Arms. Brother in Arms, like kind of shit like that. Like Army of Two type style where it's just fucking really. An Army of Two Star Wars game sounds pretty cool. Imagine if you did two bounty hunters like uh, Cat, ooh, Cad Bane and Boba Fett during the time when they were working together. That would be fucking that would be sick. Neat. That would be mm. neat. So I don't know. I'm just pitching ideas, but um, I'm gonna rapid fire with you guys to close out the review. Thank you again for watching. If you're watching the review, we appreciate it. And uh, check out the full podcast when it comes out. And make sure to like and subscribe. With that said, guys, uh, which video game are you guys most sad never came out from Star Wars? I think it's Star Wars 1313, right? For all of us, Easy. you too, Phil. Star Wars 1313, and also the. Uh, they gave it a project name. I don't remember what it was, but it was the sequel to Republic Commando. Um, it was originally going to be titled. It, it didn't get passed or like rejected yet, but it was Imperial Commando. Oh, that would have been sick. So that was, uh, I remember watching a video about that and talking about like what the starting scripts looked like. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm sold. So yeah, that, that I need that. It. For me, uh, thirteen thirteen is the big one. But Amy Henwig, who helped create Uncharted, was making an Uncharted or uh, making a Star Wars game, and it got canceled. We saw it's the one of uh, there's footage of them walking out. And it's Tatooine. It looks yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah. I thought that was thirteen thirteen. No, no, it was a completely different game, and it got canceled. Oh, I actually thought that was Outlaws. Maybe it is. I don't think it is though. I, I'm pretty sure it's not. Because I thought thirteen thirteen was like their Uncharted attempt it was gonna be i mean just that so she was in charge insane. of 1313 that got canceled came back and uh tried making another way henway a star wars game yeah <clears throat> um yeah no and remember they're making that star wars eclipse game from the guys who made like i forgot all about that one that they're still oh making yeah that. you know what i honestly thought that that eclipse trailer was the trailer for star wars acolyte I'm right there I, with you. I, I thought I honestly thought it was for Star Wars Acolyte. That was so. Acolyte. This one was for uh, Amy he- Amy Henwig's game was canceled by EA. It was going to be developed by Visceral Games. Oh, well, but we all Visceral know what happened to that. that. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say, we all know what happened <laughs> then, to that. Studio. That's why it got canceled. God, so. man, that would have been awesome. All right, there was also uh, a Star Wars Darth Maul game. I remember that. Yeah, and that was another one. That'd have been interesting. Which so that was actually the next one. Which Star Wars character should get their own game? Cad Bane. Cad Bane. I would want Darth Maul. Darth Maul. Yeah. Okay, so I'd obviously want both of yours as well, but I'm gonna say um, Kira. I'm gonna go a little bit different. I'm Kira. a big Kira's uh, the Crimson Dawn leader from oh. and from Solo as well. So uh, she. Oh, is she in Solo? She's in Solo. That's his love interest. Ah, that's. Oh, that's so Kira, Kira mm-hmm. is in Outlaws. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, I didn't. I, I looked at her. I'm like, why does she look familiar? Yep. Oh mm-hmm. my goodness. Okay, that makes sense. So I would want a Kira game because then Darth Maul is also in there because he's a part of the Crimson Dawn. So, which era of Star Wars do we want the most? And we cannot say Old Republic. <coughs> you that's can not- say sequel, beyond the sequels, in between. The Empire era, I feel like, is where it gets the most, like, gritty. Because I feel like during the Clone Wars era, it's very um, clean. Peaceful. Yeah, peaceful. I mean, of course, places like Coruscant is still just, like, yeah. rummage and garbage, right? But yeah. um, the Empire era feels like truly, like, a reset button in, like, the Wild West. Yeah. I, I want a game in the sequel era, but now I don't want it tied to anyone else. I just want to see what's going on on other planets like Coruscant, which is like just f- like right before force or uh, I want to see what's like going on in Coruscant, like during force awakens and stuff. Like it's apparently like, like ragtagged fucking destroyed. Just disgusting. It reminds me of, um, I can't remember what planet it is, but in, uh, 
Force Unleashed, you go to a planet where essentially the planet is designated as um, the trash planet. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. trash I planet where it's that. like yeah. it's meant for star destroyers to go to get destroyed and made and stuff like that. And that was yeah. super gritty and just junky. Okay, next one. Which Star Wars game needs a sequel? Republic Commando. Tyler? Yeah, I'd say Republic Commando. <sighs> or the yeah. Boba Fett game. Django Fett? Yeah, the, yeah sorry. Yeah, yeah, the Django Fett. Hunter. Yeah, yeah, the Mount yep. Hunter. That would mean be cool. Um, I did a review for that last yeah, week. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> Didn't they remaster that? Yeah, that's what he. Yeah. Re- that's oh, what he reviewed. Right. Yeah. Um. The original Battlefronts. <laughs> the that OG nice. Battlefronts. Okay. Last question. Which game did you love as a kid, from Star Wars? Force Unleashed. Battlefront. I mean, Battlefront. There's a yeah. few. The, I mean, Battlefront were, was definitely yeah. the most nostalgic. Those sure. two. Uh, Revenge of the Sith. I really liked. I think I definitely had more hours in Battlefront than any of the other Star Wars yeah. games. Um, Lego, Lego Star Wars, I thought was the shit. It was so much fun getting to go back through those. Cause I like, I played that with my little brother. It's still fun, man. It's still fun. And uh, do we want a Darth Jar Jar game? I would. I would. As long as you can make it comedic. That's yeah. the point. He goes, me stop, and he shoots out electricity. Yeah, out no, of his hands. If, uh, you know what? If you make it just absolutely just. They should just have Stupid, Darth yeah. Jar Jar be the new Star Wars Connect game. Just dance. That that, that would, would be, be good. It. That would be good. I'd be down for that. But <laughs> guys, that is our podcast, the Into the Geek First. I think it's episode eight. How are you guys doing? How are you guys feeling? You guys have fun? I, I had fun. fun. I'm sick. Yeah, we know. <laughs> I want to die. I told you you did not have to come. Well, I need to. I Why? Wanted, huh? Why did you need to because come? Because... He needs to share his opinion. Today, yeah. Okay. I needed to talk about Fair Star enough. Wars. But thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, rate, wherever the hell you guys are watching us, whether it's Spotify, iTunes, YouTube. We appreciate it all. And thank you again for Ubisoft for sending on over the code to Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, next episode, we'll be giving going into spoilers, and by then we should be finished yeah, with the game. Yeah, well, that's the goal. I'm I'm not going to be playing my computer until I finish it. Cause, hell yeah. Yeah, I need to just so. get yeah. it. And also just want to just clarify that re- uh, this review you guys gave it is not the definitive. No, review. yeah. If our scores change, we'll update we'll let it. you know. But why. this is a so far review. Yeah. So and it's very light because, like it says, like no patch, very no patch, no nothing. early yeah. access. Yeah. It's no uh, detriment to what the game actually comes out to be. I just want to make that very clear yep. because people are probably looking forward to this, and there are definitely critiques. I'm gonna be honest gonna with you. It. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not looking forward to reading the comments. So, nah. not, not because we like, not because of some of the bad things we said about the game, because we like the game. Because that's the Star Wars community, right, guys? Thank you so much. Please sponsor us, someone. <laughs> sponsor us. Coca Cola, anyone. I'll take anyone. Gillette. All right, we're done. Have a great rest of your guys' day. Stay classy.